Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Nifty Ninty. I am your host, Matt Tuna Turner, and this is the podcast where we break down everything Nintendo every week. This past week was the biggest convention in gaming all year round. It was the annual E3 video game showcase and expo. As usual, all the publishers were there. We got quite a few surprises. However, I'm going to touch on all that E3 goodness a little bit later in the show. For now, why don't we run through this past week's new releases. Just to note, the surprises that were announced at E3 I will be covering later during the E3 segment. This is releases that were already scheduled for this week. Alright, let's get into it. As usual, we have a literal boatload of Nindies, again, starting with a game called Pub Encounter, followed by Chameleon Run, which appears to be an endless runner. After that, we have a vertical shmup, 1917 The Alien Invasion, another tower defense game. We have Bloons TD5, puzzle game Hexalogic, RBI Baseball 18, followed by another sports title, this time ACA Neo Geo title Super Sidekicks 3, right in time for the World Cup. We also got a few bigger releases this week. To tie in with the Incredibles 2 movie, we got LEGO Incredibles 2. We also have the first hero shooter for the Switch, and that is Paladins Champions of the Realm, which, although not free to start, it is considered the starter pack. We also have Flashback which is the 25th anniversary of Flashback this week. It is a 90s classic adventure game. It was originally released on the Sega Genesis, and it played a lot like Prince of Persia. I remember playing this a little bit as a kid on my friend's Sega Genesis. So, kind of a light week. There were no 3DS releases or Wii U releases this week. That's because it was E3. That was the main focus of everything this week. It dominated the news. All the releases, everything. Speaking of E3, why don't we start getting into that coverage now? Not really sure where to start. There was so much, so much at E3 this year. Maybe I'll start with the third-party stuff before getting into Nintendo's actual press briefing, or Nintendo Direct, as they have been calling it for the past few years. The first third-party announcement came during Bethesda Softworks press briefing, and they announced that Fallout Shelter is available on the Switch that very day. I picked it up, but have yet to play it. However, it does play just like the mobile game that came out in relation with Fallout 4. I know it was incredibly popular. A lot of people still play it. I think they even mentioned that they still have tens of millions of people that still play that game daily. But now it is on the Switch, and I'm sure that it has been downloaded tons of times. The next third-party press briefing that had announcements for Nintendo would be Ubisoft. They announced, of course, a new Let's Dance game that came out every year. They also did uh, a new game called Trials Rising. comes out next February. That will be coming to the Switch. And then they announced uh, a new a new game called Starlink. It looked like an NFC toy game with like modular toys. You could update the toys and it would update in the game. I wasn't sure that people would still want one of those NFC toy games, the Lego Dimensions game, I don't think has, I don't even think they make it anymore. Not to mention like the Disney one and um, aside from the actual Amiibos that Nintendo makes, I'm not sure people really do the NFC toy game anymore. So when I saw this, I was a bit surprised. It does come out this October, but the thing that I think really hooked a lot of people was towards the end of that trailer, you heard a familiar sound and then it was unveiled that Star Fox was going to be in that game. Not only was Star Fox announced to be in this game, but Miyamoto-san was actually in the audience during the announcement. Later, a developer was interviewed for the game Starlink, and they said that actually the relationship for Star Fox and Ubisoft started last year at E3, which, if you remember, they announced Mario and Rabbids, so they've obviously got a very good relationship between Ubisoft and Nintendo. Folks at Ubisoft met with some Nintendo execs last year at E3 and they showed off a little bit of Starlink and it just kind of snowballed from there. Figured Star Fox was a good fit and they put him in the game. And that is a Nintendo Switch exclusive version of the game. Starlink Battle for Atlas 
complete with Star Fox in the game. I did mention Mario and Rabbids. The folks at Ubisoft, they started their show with a musical presentation by a band called Critical Hit, and some of the producers, they played the music for the upcoming DLC live. It was fun. It was ridiculous. It was, it was cool. They showed a little bit of uh, story from the DLC and some gameplay. So that was the big third-party news that was unveiled at their respective press briefings. Nintendo actually closed off the press briefings with their Nintendo Direct. It was it was short, which is uh, in line with what they generally do with their Nintendo Directs. I think Nintendo, for their main focus at E3s, has become their Treehouse Live, where they actually get to show gameplay and and they stream that, of course, on the internet, but that's where you get a real good look at a lot of their games. On the topic of the Nintendo Direct, it was a lot of fun. It started with a game uh, that plays a lot like Sin and Punishment, but you're in a mech called Damon X Machina. And I never thought in a million years that Nintendo would start their E3 press briefing with metal music and mechs. It was, it was really cool. A great way to start it off. After that, we got some Xenoblade 2 DLC, and we got a better look at that. It looks really cool. Some more story, some more, some more items and stuff. And then we got a surprise announcement of Super Mario Party, which looks like a lot of fun. Uh, it has online play and leaderboards. That was confirmed uh, a little later in the show. But the cool thing about Super Mario Party is, if you guys remember, a little while back, earlier this year, Nintendo filed a patent for multi-screen play, where it looked, kind of looked like you could put your switches together and the, and the game action would, would continue from one screen to the other. Apparently, it's for Mario Party, because in the trailer they showed you in a tank and you travel from one screen to the other and you can bounce the 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 balls that the tanks shoot off the screen and the object is to blow up the other player. After Super Mario Party we got a n new Fire Emblem game called Fire Emblem Three Houses which looks absolutely amazing and then the probably the worst kept secret at E3 this year was Fortnite. Anyways we got a look at that after Fortnite and then Reggie came on and we all love Reggie. Love the way he speaks, his cadence he came on and he announced that there was going to be a new game, an indie game, that he really likes called Hollow Knight coming. Not only did Reggie talk about the Hollow Knight game, he also gave us a closer look at Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. We got to see some actual gameplay. It does look a lot like Pokemon Go on steroids, and they did confirm it is based on Pokemon Yellow, but it is not a straight remake. They also showed off a little bit of the Pokeball Plus, which the surprise announcement here was that every single Pokeball Plus that is purchased comes with Mew inside of it. So you can transfer Mew right into Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee right off the bat. And then of course you can put other Pokemon in the game and bring them with you. So that was kind of cool to see. We got to, we got some news on how it works in handheld mode because as we've seen so far you use either the Pokeball Plus or one or a single Joy-Con and you, you do a throwing motion to catch the Pokemon. But in handheld mode uh, it still uses the gyroscope but instead of like throwing a ball you can't see that better doing air quotes. Instead of throwing a ball, you actually align targets to catch instead. So you're moving your switch around to align targets. I assume it still has that inner circle that's that gets smaller. I don't know if that's true. I, it would make sense because it would make catching a little more difficult. I know for this, the main focus is on catching the Pokemon. And then we also saw some trainer battles and also how multiplayer works. Multiplayer is incredibly seamless. Another person just picks up a Joy-Con and shakes it and they're in the game. They share, they share your Pokemon already. And then you can also do teamed trainer battles which seems kind of unfair for the person you're you're fighting, but as long as uh, everyone's having fun, I guess that's the whole point. But it does it does look like a cool game. Uh, it, ha it has inspired me to pick up Pokemon Yellow, so I think I'll play through that before it comes out in October. In fact, I actually got a brand new 3DS this week, so looking forward to playing through a Pokemon game again. I just played through Pokemon Y, so. Pokemon Yellow will be fun. And then we got a closer look at the Square Enix RPG Octopath Traveler, uh, which comes out in July. 
and they released a new demo for it that very day. And if you download the demo and purchase the game, your progress from the demo carries over into the main game, which is pretty cool. After that, we got another surprise announcement of Dragon Ball Fighter Z. This part of the show, they did kind of like a montage, so they ran through just a bunch of stuff. But Dragon Ball Fighter Z was the big takeaway from that, as well as Dark Souls with a release date of summer. That's all it said, summer. I mean, it keeps getting pushed, so who knows when it's actually going to release. And then, after that nice little montage, we got what Nintendo said they were going to focus on the for most of E3, and that was Super Smash Bros, which is being called Super Smash Bros Ultimate. For the Smash Bros portion of the Nintendo Direct, they had Sakurai videotaped, and he began with running down some of the characters in the game. We found out that they were numbered uh, in order of release. They ran through a whole bunch before announcing that everyone from every single Smash Bros is in this game. They're saying, Everyone is here, except for I know a lot of people out there on the in the blogosphere were really hoping for Waluigi. He's not in the game. However, during a Treehouse Live, you did see Mario in a Waluigi costume. So, kind of, sort of, he's in the game. Not really. He is there as an assist trophy. They also showed a few tweaks in the game. Just some people who got costume updates like Breath of the Wild for a Young Link is back from Ocarina of Time. Ganondorf is modeled after Ocarina of Time and Zelda after, I think it was Twilight Princess they said. So, and then also there were some move tweaks, Final Smash changes, uh, Falco for instance, there is no more Landmaster, he has a similar Final Smash to Star Fox. They introduced something called mid-air charging, which is great for people like who main as Samus. You can charge your weapon in mid-air. It does leave you a little vulnerable. They also introduced something called Echoes. So for this, you have your character, and then you have like an Echo character. So for Pit, yeah, his Echo character would be Dark Pit. They also announced a new Echo, which is kind of cool. Daisy is going to be Peach's Echo. She plays like Peach but with a few different tweaks, and obviously she looks like Daisy. They also brought back Wolf, and they announced two new characters. One we already knew, the Inklings. They introduced the uh, Squid Sisters as an assist trophy as well, but the big new character reveal is, and I know people have been clamoring for this forever, is Ridley. Ridley is actually in the game. During the Treehouse Live, we got to see a little bit of Ridley, how how he plays, and it looks a bit like Meta Knight or Charizard. They also showed off a couple of new stages. Of course, all the, there's a whole bunch of returning stages, but the new ones they showed off was the Great Plateau Tower, which was modeled after, obviously, the Tower from Breath of the Wild, and we got a Splatoon 2 stage, Mori Towers, which looks kind of fun. It's got a whole bunch of levels. kind of looks like Mori Towers from the Splatoon 2 game, also a little bit like you know, Donkey Kong. So there's levels. It's going to be, it looks like a challenging stage. They also unveiled during the Super Smash Bros. portion that they have GameCube controllers that are coming to the Switch. They look like they're wired. I think this is more uh, fan service for the, for the hardcore players. I kind of think that the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller probably works pretty well, but, you know, the GameCube controllers were great. I was actually kind of hoping for, like, a Wavebird 2 kind of thing, but I guess the Switch Pro Controller will be as close as I get to that. Also, with Smash Bros. Ultimate, now you select the stage before the fighter because the stage may change who you decide to play as. I mean, I'm, I main as Link, but sometimes I like playing as Little Mac, or maybe as Dr. Mario, and it, it does kind of depend on the stage. There are some stages where a character like Little Mac doesn't really work because his jump is awful. And then finally we got the release date of this game. It comes out in December of this year. I know a lot of people were hoping for it to come out in September, in line with the Nintendo Switch online service, but it is coming out in December. Speaking of the Nintendo Switch online service, we didn't get any more news on that. So we'll probably get a Nintendo Direct about that closer to September. My guess would be July-ish or maybe August. And that was the end of their Nintendo Direct. Uh, it was short, sweet, to the point. They showed off a lot of games. I mean, the big one 
obviously Smash Bros. And then a lot of people were really excited for Fortnite. I know I've downloaded it and I've actually played it. It's a lot of fun. My first introduction to Fortnite, so I'm happy to see it on the Switch, even though everyone knew it was coming. After the Nintendo Direct, it went straight into Treehouse Live, where they started getting into, I believe it was Smash Bros. Of course, as E3 went on, we got a slow trickle of additional news about other titles that either weren't shown or people missed. Things like the fact that Nintendo confirmed they are still working on Metroid Prime 4. They were notably absent during the Nintendo Direct. We also got a few surprise releases that were announced, um, aside from the fact that Fallout Shelter is available the day of, Fortnite was available the day of, we also found out that Hamster had been quietly working on a couple new arcade archives t titles, uh, one being that Donkey Kong. Yes, the original arcade Donkey Kong is coming to Switch. Not only was it coming to Switch, we are getting three versions of the game. We get the original buggy Japanese arcade release. We also get the fixed Japanese arcade release. And then, of course, the international release that most of the folks in North America got to play, which is pretty cool. So they kind of went all out on the ROMs for that one. But the best part about that is it was available that day. So go out there and download it. They also have been working on a cult favorite called Skyskipper. That'll be coming out later this summer. I think they said July. It's also confirmed during the announcement of Skyskipper that the theory that Mr. Miyamoto had worked on the cabinet art for it was true. He did, in fact, work on the cabinet art for it. So it'll be really cool. That game was actually never released outside of a couple test places in Japan. So it'll be cool to see that come to the Switch. Nintendo also announced that Koopa Troopa and Blooper will be coming to Mario Tennis Aces for free later this year. They also dropped the Splatoon 2 DLC, so that's now live. It looks like a lot of fun, some really cool trials to kill some time with. Looks, looks cool. I think I'll pick that up. And then another surprise announcement was from Double Fine. They announced that a couple games are coming to the Switch. One is a Grim Fandango remaster, and the other is Broken Age. So that was all the the big, big, big Nintendo stuff that happened this past week. I mean, there were, there were we knew going into it that the main focus for Nintendo was going to be Smash Bros. So it was easy to prepare for that. So I guess that's the uh, meat and potatoes of Nintendo's E3 press briefing. Let's see. Reactions. 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 Um, why don't we start with the bad? Let's go with the bad first. I kind of felt last year's press briefing was better. It hit all the right notes. This year's wasn't bad, but I felt it was lacking in surprise. I mean, it was short, it was sweet, and we were told in advance that Smash was the focus, but you, you hear these things and you, you hold out for just a little something extra. Even though Star Fox was rumored, it would have been nice to see them outside of the Ubisoft collaboration. Also, Metroid Prime 4 footage, or like just something completely out of left field, like an Advanced Wars or Kingdom Hearts or something, coming to switch F0 would would have been would have been nice a nice surprise Super Mario Party was a nice surprise sure and Fortnite we already knew is like the west, worst kept secret of this year's E3 yeah just a serious lack of surprise as for the good they showcased a decent amount of games it was all switch focused there was literally nothing for the 3DS the Smash Invitational was fun to watch, as was the Splatoon 2 World Championships. The surprise of Super Mario Party was cool. It was also cool to see how they're using that patent. Getting a closer look at Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was, was, was nice. The Damon X Machina game was nice. But yeah, other than that, they, they really just focused on two titles, three titles. Even though Fortnite... Everyone kind of knew it was coming. It was nice to see that it was available that day. That that was a surprise, so that was cool. But yeah, overall, it was it was a slightly underwhelming E3. I just I thought last year's was was better. They focused on not just 
one game like they did this one smash but it had it had there was shock there was surprise we got a pokemon announcement we got metroid prime tees we got a whole bunch of stuff last year that we didn't really see this year we didn't see anything more on yoshi we didn't see anything more for metroid i mean we we know what the pokemon game turned into and at least smash looks amazing and mario party looks like a blast it would have been nice to see a new mario kart though I, I, I knew that wasn't going to happen, though. It was too soon for Mario Kart. Some Mario Odyssey DLC would have been great. Like, where was that? But this is, this is I guess, this is very in tune with Nintendo, I guess. They like to do these pre-recorded directs, and they're great. They're short, they're sweet, and they're to the point. But E3 is such a huge showcase. Like, the whole world watches it, and I just kind of feel like they missed the boat this year. I kind of feel like of the first parties, Microsoft kind of took best in show out of the three of them. And then for third parties, Ubisoft was fun. Bethesda was just more stuff we already knew. And aside from the Star Wars announcement, we got an EA. I mean, theirs was the usual sports games and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. It didn't leave the best taste in my mouth. I'm still, still happy. I think the Treehouse Live portion of their E3 event was probably more enjoyable than the actual Nintendo Direct briefing that we got. It was nice to see more Smash footage, more Mario Party, more Splatoon 2, including the expansion. Well, folks, that's it for another week of Nifty Ninty. I hope you enjoyed the rundown of Nintendo's E3 press briefing, Nintendo Direct, as well as some of the reactions and other news that came out of this week's big, big conference. As usual, I would have questions here. However, nobody's asked any. So again, I'll ask you guys a question. I recently picked up the Mega Man Legacy Collection. And I'm going to let you guys decide which game I'm going to play and review for you guys. So why don't you let me know in the comments below which Mega Man game you want me to play. I have Mega Man's 1 through 10. I'm willing to play one of them. And you guys are going to vote for it. You can also hit me up on Twitter. Let me know there which one you want me to play. I'll, I'll keep asking this for, let's say, the next three weeks and see what you guys think. I was going to do a game review for you guys this week, but sadly, work kind of got in the way. I did purchase a few new games, so I'm going to rip through them as quickly as possible, but for both Switch and 3DS, uh, digital and packaged titles. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I can do that for next week's episode. As I mentioned earlier, put in the comments below which Mega Man game you want me to review, and I will do that for you. Also, please find me on Twitter. If you like, please hit that subscribe button, and you can also find me on Patreon. It would help a great deal. And thank you again. See you next week. Stay nifty.